Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mary and here we discuss about houseplants with a little bit more emphasis on Hoyas. So today I am continuing the troubleshooting saga that I have started a while ago with a video that I posted previously. I will put a link up here somewhere on the uh, previous video and today um, we will discuss about thirsty leaves that are dropping or leaves that are not as they should be let's say so um today is valentine's day happy valentine's day to all those celebrating and i thought that the lab rat for today would be my hoya carrii so this is my carrii inner variegated and here i have my outer variegated one um the good thing with the outer variegated is that it keeps the variegation so it will stay like that i am in reality the leaves when they first grow and you can see here a new leaf that's the one so they start very green so even the outside is green but as they mature they become like the rest like green on the inside white on the outside now for the inner variegated carrii there are two things so some cultivars do keep the variegation but the majority including the one i have unfortunately lose it in the as the leaves grow but this is not what i want to discuss today so this one which is um, the inner variegated carrii that i have i got it it is actually one of my first Hoyas um, I was very happy when I found it because I was looking for a non-zombie leaf like this for example but I was looking for an actual plant and I found this one and I immediately grabbed it um, since it was one of my first Hoyas I did not, back then I was not using pawn, so I kept it in a medium quite chunky but I would most probably put this um, medium for my terrestrial Hoyas, not carry eye. Uh, so I had it for a while, it was growing nicely, all this is new growth that had happened, uh, but unfortunately it started losing leaves. So the leaves have started becoming a bit um, soft and usually when you have soft leaves there are two options. The Hoya is either very thirsty um, or you need to look for some other issues like um, flat mites or uh, stunted growth uh, that may occur from that or anything else. So. As at, in the beginning it was growing fine, I didn't have any issues with the plant. I decided, you know, I will keep it like that, I will not transfer to pond because there is no reason to transfer if the plant is growing fine. Um, but quite recently I started having very soft leaves. So normally for the more succulent type Hoyas, um, many people in order to water them, they do the taco test as it's called which is you take one of the leaf and if it's it's not bending and then the Hoya is fine, doesn't need any water a very good example is here so for this one all the leaves are very hard so I cannot bend, I cannot do anything I also have it in not a pond but in a very chunky mix and I'm thinking that probably I will need to transfer this one but we'll go to this so um, normally uh, the leaves should be very sturdy uh, for these thick leaf Hoyas, uh, they should not bend. These leaves on my inner variegated carry eye started bending. So I was watering the plant as normal, I didn't change any of the uh, habits uh, that it had, uh, but the leaves have started being extremely soft so maybe you can see here that the leaves are bending very easily 
you see? And the thing is that this is quite well watered. So first thing that I did, as I've mentioned previously, a rule of thumb, no matter what is happening, the first thing that you need to do is check with your microscope for flat mites. I checked thoroughly, no flat mites on this one, uh, but I wasn't sure what the problem might be. So, the next thing that I'm thinking, and most probably uh, this will be the case for this one, but I just want to go through the whole steps with you guys so you can understand a little bit better as well. Uh, the problem most probably is root rot. So, if you leave a, a Hoya without water, originally the, rot, the roots will start drying out. Uh, once you start watering, then these dry roots cannot absorb the water they need. So, technically, the plant starts dying. So, either over water or under water can both be an issue. And until you be able to fine tune, let's say, and see exactly what is the watering schedule that your plant needs, you may have these issues. So, this one, because it was left a while uh, to dry out, I'm thinking that this might be the cause. So, either dry root, uh, which caused eventually root rot, or directly root rot, which I don't think this is the case, but we will see together. So, since no flat mites, no other issues, no pests, what I have decided to do is since it keeps dropping leaves, especially this last week I have lost two leaves which you can see here I have put in perlite, I'm thinking maybe I can keep as zombie leaves, these ones let's see, I'm not sure if they have um, uh, some uh, cells that they can grow from that or not, but we'll see by the way, uh, many people are buying individual leaves, especially during Valentine's Day uh, to give to their beloved so they get very nice and you know cute little pots um, with just one leaf which is lovely with because it's you know they're heart shaped but the problem is that usually these leaves never grow so you spend your money for something which is as it's called a zombie leaf um, Personally, if I can get a whole plant with the same amount of money, I would not spend my money on just one leaf that I will keep like that forever. Um, some people have stated that, um, oh, you know, my zombie leaf suddenly started growing. And yes, this can happen. Um, this happens if the leaf has some cells um, underneath, close to the node, which can produce new growth. But this is quite seldom, it's not very often, so normally when you get a zombie leaf, it remains a zombie leaf. Uh, now, back to here. A very important thing that you need to notice is that when you get a Hoya, you always need to do some research. You need to check whether it's an epiphyte, whether it's a terrestrial, and then uh, also if it likes humidity or not so much. Some Hoyas prefer much higher humidity compared to others. Um, so always, always do your research first and then decide on which medium you will put your Hoya in. If you want to experiment as I do sometimes, it's fine, but especially for plants that you really like and you do not want to mess around with them um, I would strongly recommend to do your research first before deciding on you know when I will replant how I will replant what medium am I going to use for my Hoya and so on and so forth so this one most probably I'm not sure if you can see here but it has quite a bit of soil so it looks like it's a chunky mix but in reality, I'm not sure if it's the pot that is a problem or the mix. But I'm thinking that we will uh, find root rot when we unpot this plant. So without further ado, let's get to work and see what's going to happen here. I have 
this thing and my chopstick, the one and I will start slowly removing the soil from around the pot so we can see what's hiding this plant in particular I'm thinking that it's probably two different plants because this thing which is, has had all the new growth um, is the leaves are quite soft this on the other hand the leaves are much sturdier so they are quite similar to my outer variegated one so I'm thinking that most probably um, one of the two has rotted the other is still okay but because I don't want to have the whole plant rotting this is why I'm trying to salvage what I can right now and you will see in a while when I show you that this has lots of soil inside this medium is for sure no good for Hoyas again as I said I'm not sure if I'm excused because now I know but it was one of my first Hoyas that I got I wasn't very familiar back then with Hoyas I wasn't sure whether you know it's I, I read chunky mix and I put okay I put some cocoa bark and a few other chunky items inside but more than half of it it's soil and most probably this is why it's dying right now so I'm trying to be as gentle as possible when I'm unpotting and all right so you see most of this is soil interestingly enough it is not really wet and it is not really dry it has some cocoa pit I had put some cocoa pit inside as well so but okay and we have many dead roots coming out of the plant so as a matter of fact I don't think it's two different plants I think it's just one but I can hardly see any healthy root system anymore so a very good way to remove the soil without hurting the plant too much or the roots if there are any this is not the case uh, is to use something like this I'm using this chopstick ah okay so after all it was two plants that's interesting all right so let me clean this up a bit more to see what we're dealing with and yes guys we have barely any roots here Alright, so let me show you this one, which is the one that has the major problem. You see all this? All these stringy roots. These have rotted, all of them. So as we said previously, whenever you see very thin roots, these uh, have all rotted and you should remove them in order to save the plant. I'm not even sure if I see any healthy roots. So yeah, most probably this will be a restart. Now on this one, the situation is more or less the same, 
but I think I just had a little bit more time to save it before it goes completely dead. I can see just a few roots which are slightly better, but not that many. So at least we know what the problem is. So now, how I'm going to solve this? And let me show you before that the situation. So you see, all this is like pure soil. I know that's on me. I know that is on me, but okay, it is what it is. So now that I know better, we will try and make the best out of what we have. What I'm thinking is for this one, I will probably cut the plant here so at least I can have all this which has already some aerial roots if you can see here so I will probably cut it here I may put this in case it will be able to root but I'm not really positive for this one but for this one I will keep in water, so I will make one propagation for sure, which I will be keeping in water, so eventually I can move to semi hydro to pond. Uh, I was not sure if Carrii likes pond or semi hydro in general because it's like a cactus, it's like it's very succulent, the leaves are very thick. But I have discussed with a few other collectors and they told me that yes, okay, some of them keep their Carrii in pond and they have no issues whatsoever and the Hoya is thriving so I was like okay why not so this I will do like that this one I will also try to cut and root from scratch again but this one for this one I will be putting in a stratum so I will eventually move to my Hoya mix the correct this time all right, so guys, let me just try to rectify the whole mess and I will come back to show you the propagations. All right, guys, we are back. So, as previously said, I have chopped and propped in order to save this plan. So, the first one, the small one, I have put in my mini prop box in Stratum or Ada that I'm using, along with uh, some of my other propagations. The next one I decided to make a combo of stratum plus pond so I have put it here after I thoroughly cleaned the roots and okay cut it and the third one which is the brand new cutting is this one which I have put in water I added some rooting hormone I always put some rooting hormone in when I water propagate and so far I had amazing results, no issues. So I will either end up with three or zero plants, remains to be seen. Uh, so I think that's it for this troubleshooting video. Um, a few things that I would like to highlight, whenever you see the leaves that are like droopy or they are uh, just falling off your Hoya, or uh, they're very soft to the touch uh, when you are water after a while the leaves do not go firm uh, there is a high chance that again it is root rot so steps that you need to follow is one check for pests if the plant is clean second always check the roots and um, so everyone that's it for today again happy valentine's day to those celebrating uh, if you did like this video please like and subscribe i would be more than happy to have you in my channel and that's it for today i'll see you next time thank you all